Good morning, everyone. Um, we are doing the fencing that I'd hoped to do yesterday. I'm uh, just going to start this by saying I'm kind of a little bit distracted right now, not only just because it was a hard push yesterday, and I'm kind of limited on what ex energy output I have, just with the disability and such. So um, it's already started off to sort of a rougher, slow go, headachey type day. Um, just lack of energy and sort of that the body's wrecked. But we're going to try and do, I'll show you some of this. Um, the other issue was, is yesterday, last night, I don't know if you remember my video from, uh, well, you watched the video and then I went and checked, uh, working on the trailer and I went and checked the sheep and the neighbor's dog was in with them. Uh, I was so preoccupied checking the sheep that was way up in the trees and frightened and I thought she was injured. And then another ewe that was limping that I completely walked past a little lamb that got killed by their fucking dog. I'm sorry, I swore. Um... Um, I know it was their dog because the bite distance apart, so the two incisor, the canines, they're really large and coyotes are small. I think they're four mil and then I think they're 10, no, they're not 10 centimeters, 10 mil. They're a certain distance apart for coyotes. You can actually measure it. And this was for a large breed dog. So you, if we had wolves, you could maybe consider a wolf. And then the nature of the kill, coyotes usually don't break the skin on the neck. They'll just hold and suffocate. This was bite, 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 bite. So it was clearly a dog that didn't know what it was doing. So, um, and then today when I'm trying to push the sheep across, usually they go running into their field. Well, they're so scared, they decided to go the other way. So I spent 40 minutes chasing them around. So uh, yeah, so that's been my morning. What a treat, right? So um, we're gonna be working on this. This is our furthest corner back from our home. So um, I'm just going to show you, I actually have a map. I'd like to do this. Hey, look at the um, infographic and we're located here. And then the, I don't have that. Well, I'm not doing that because I said I'm not editing. You know, I got two videos out in two days, so be happy. So I'm going to switch you around and show you what's going on. So the house is here and we're fencing this whole area off here. We're currently standing right in this corner there. And we're going to finish putting the wire up. All the posts are around this section and we're going to put the wire up around here. So this pen here is going to be the Rams field. So we'll be trucking the rams out here hopefully tomorrow or the next day i want to get them onto this so what we're going to be doing is bracing and sheep wire i'm hoping so now you see sort of so that's what our property is right there so these things here um these are what we use to brace so when you put your fence in you want to brace wire to go down to the point basically in an arrow away from the force that the barbed wire or the wire is going to apply because you want to sort of pull this hole come on zoom out zoom out zoom out zoom out you want this thing to pull this way because the wire is pulling that way so if you put the rail across the top and that wire and an arrow away from the force of pull um, that's what we're going to be putting in is those wires um, so we've got this brace here and then we've got to put a brace on there so i'll go over some of the small parts on that but the other thing i want to make note is you can sort of see how that back post there i'm going to turn this around for you you see how that's leaning way over that way versus this one? It's about, it's actually about three inches lean there. That's because this brace is too short. So this is only a five foot. I put tens in. The reason being is this five foot short brace doesn't have the force pushing this way to counteract the barbed wire pull that way. So you're technically pulling the fence over because this brace is too short. So that's why we use tens. And then we set this, these brace rails here is usually, I put them about a quarter, between a quarter and one third of the, down from the top. So two thirds here or three quarters here. Um, not from the top of the rail, but from the top of where our wire is going to go. Uh, just because it applies more force to sort of the center of the wire. So that's what I really like about fencing is that um, it's all physics. It's really, really cool. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to counteract the force of the wire pulling this way and at the same time support it because you're stopping your animals going at a perpendicular angle into it usually. So you got to counteract two different forces. So there's a lot of physics involved and it's actually, um, if you just follow a couple simple guidelines, it's really easy to do it with. Um, these posts are only required here. These ones that go down, they're only required to stop the force of the animals going this way into it. Um, the two end posts are what actually support your wire and hold it upright and keep it tight. These um, middle posts here are just preventing your animals when they push it from going straight through it. So uh, these are all spaced at, well, I'm gonna 
show you here. So this whole fence is 10 foot spaced. Um, it keeps our sheep mesh really nice and tight to the ground. Um, this was also where we were having issues with cows breaking through. So now this is really tight. They gave us a bunch of posts to help offset the cost of this. So that's really nice. And that's why this was done at 10. Um, this fence here, this is 10. This is 12 for a possible gate in the future. And that's 10. I mean, same with this, 10, um, 12, and 10. Possible gate there in case, you know, whatever. But then all these spaces here are 20s all the way down, except for there's a corner, um, a brace in the middle right there. Oop. It's hard to see it there. But, um, the neighbor does have a fence over there, about 100 feet or so. Um, I wonder if we can see it right there. Sort of right there. And that's their cow, his cow fence. So um, if he ever wants to take that down, we'll put the barbed wire onto this. But I'm not building this for cows. I'll leave that for them to do. But if he ever takes that down, maybe we'll take the extra posts and throw them in here. And then put the barbed wire on this and that'll reinforce all this up. So... Um, yeah, we're just going to get to work on bracing all this and then rolling our wire out here. So, oh, if you ask what these pink things are for, so there's a pink post there, pink mark post there, pink mark post way over there. Um, I think there's another one way up on this corner here. Yeah, way up on, ooh, way up on that brace, there's a pink post. So these pink posts are right here, here and here and here. And then there's another one here. We're going to be doing a star pattern out of electric fences. Because the ram's holding pen is going to be in here for their overnight. So then we can graze this section for a couple days. Pull them off. Graze this section. Graze this section. Graze this. And this. Hi, fatty. Fatty, 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 fatty. Flies. No. Fatty, fatty, fatty. She's a good looking horse. This here is a gate. And then this whole open area is where we're going to panel off. Right to here for the rams. This will be their overnight pen. And then we'll star out from here to those pink posts. So we'll just go through the trees and clear back about a five foot section all the way out to all those um, points on the permanent fence. So that is sort of the plan there. But this corner here, we're gonna have to put a, ho a couple rails across. This is such a tight angle, like it's really tight like that, that if a horse gets into it and another horse is being a dink, they can't get out of that, they'll be trapped. So we wanna make sure if a horse is ever in here that we put rails up there. But for the rams, this will be fine. But anyway, that's the corner we started in. There's a center brace right there. This will have wire, the, the brace wire, it'll go as an X. So it'll go down to this corner and down to this corner. I'm gonna go through and definitely get our bracing wires put on today. I'd really like to start laying out some of this stuff here. So yeah, I'll just, I'm just gonna get cranking on that. And we'll see you guys maybe when I get to a point that's worth talking about, but there's not much worth talking about, so. So I just did that brace down there just so i could remember how it all goes because it's been a year but all we need is the wire um just a hammer the cat the locks the, the tensioners a tool for tensioning it you can also just put a, a pair of, um adjustable wrench on this and turn it if you don't have this tool um some crimp fittings uh some things to cut and bend the wire a crimper and then some staples and that's literally all we need to do is these wires here. So now we're at this middle one. So we need to go this way and this way. I will uh, just go over this briefly. So we need to have this pin. Yeah, We need to have this pin stick out a little bit. Because the wire will ride over top of that. And then go down to the bottom. Where we'll put a staple in and then two more staples to prevent that wire from digging in and pulling. Oh, I'll show you. Just let me get this together here. There we go. Just out a little bit. There we go. And then our staples. Just three staples. One in here. And then just two looped over just like this and then what that'll do is the wire will ride under here and then these two staples prevent the wire from biting in because this is not going to give as much as say that corner as it pulls this way so it sort of gives a little bit of a reinforcement as that wire pulls this edge over so we'll go over and i'll finish that on that side there and then we'll get to the next part <sighs> Nail 
one of the ends won't let it come at me. Ah, you son of a! And start all over again. up a little bit higher okay like that lock that easier with two people way easier with two people put my foot against this so it doesn't spring out and then because I forgot my fencing pliers I gotta use this it's not ideal but it can be done maybe not on somebody whose hands are totally screwed out that worked yesterday oh man my hands are done Gotta find where my fencing pliers are. You watch it in a truck somewhere. There we go. And that's why we keep our foot against that. Okay, so there's this end here. Put it into a hook, bring this end back. Oh, I did that too soon. Dang it. Straighten that all out. Got to put a crimp on first. I forgot to put a crimp on. Shoot. Slide the crimper on first. Okay. Put this on here. So it lines up, grab one of these, slide this on there, get my finger out of the way. I don't know if my camera's facing the right way, I'm going to assume it is. Try and slide this down. There we go, that seems like a good spot. <clears throat> Line up the crimp. sliding on me. Ow. This is not an ideal spot where I'm sitting here. Uh, hold this over a bit. Okay. Neighbor going to town. Mr. Billy. Try and line that up and get that in there. There we go. There we go. Okay. And then just for added security. Grab the tail, hook it over so it doesn't slide out, and that's done. That's done. Okay, with that, that won't swing at my face now. Take this, put a light bend in this. And I actually want this on the other side. We can fix that. Can we? I think so. I'm just going to hook this in here because there's some holes in there. Slide that through. So, I actually want these... Oh, zoom out. I want these crimpers on the barbed wire side because once that square hold mesh there, once this goes up, it's going to be really hard to ooh, get in here and ratchet these down with the tool. So, I'm thinking... For this fence here, I'll just put it on this side here. So I'll just sort of flip this wire around and I'll... I forgot to show you tensioning these things with these tools here. Um, there's two different kinds. Usually they don't have a little square in the end, but they're basically a fork with a couple of notches on it. And what they do is... Ooh, stay there. Should have thought this out before I moved the camera. Okay, so... You can use them usually two ways depending on the style of these because they this even though this is what this looks like there's a couple different styles so we'll either have uh instead of this being square ish it'll be round on both sides and then you need actually this to contact um to sort of grab those teeth and pull it as you rotate it you know so you put this on here and then this will grab the teeth and you pull it over um, there's the ones that are square on both sides so that these square teeth here will actually um, basically I'll just do it this way would oh gosh this isn't gonna fit okay so this is the different style but they'd fit that square like that on both sides and you can turn it that way um, then you got the ones like this 
that none of this fits it's too wide that's why you got the hole in the end and you put the hole over here and then you can crank them down just like that so this is a pretty good tool for doing fences albeit a little flimsy i would have liked it made out of something a little thicker um, maybe i'll weld something onto the outer edges of this but i usually use this thing here so uh this one down here is a prime example of oh you guys can't even see nothing you can't see nothing can't see it so let's see how are you looking there not looking at anything so this thing's right here okay so we're way out of view so this one here is one of the ones that we could we can't reach so we'll just start cranking that down try and keep your hands out of pinch points that's me how i know and then we just start cranking this until she's tight. I like these a lot because um, I like using these things. Okay, the first one is installation. So what we can do is these posts might lean back a little bit, ideally, um, so that when you tighten the wire down, it pulls it this way a little bit. And then what you'll do is you can come here and you can ratchet these down and actually pull the fence that way, putting more tension on your wire. That's installation. These really nice. The other one is, is um, due to the nature of metal and then this dinner wire and then the type of wire you use and the quality of it. And we all know the quality of everything sucks these days. Um, this wire through the heat and cold does have the possibility of stretching a little bit, especially if you have animals pushing on it every now and then. And they actually stretch the wire a little bit. And then you come and these will be loose. You can just come in and really easily just tighten them all up right um you don't have those big sticks across here that you got to break loose and do and the only time you can really do those stick things is when there's no fence on it otherwise you're sort of fighting through the wire so that's why i do like these quite a bit or just any adjustable tensioner is the way to go yeah it costs seven dollars but uh in the grand scheme of things it does it just makes installation and maintenance a lot nicer one tool and somebody can just one tool you can walk around the whole farm and adjust every fence so or tighten every fence or every brace i guess but that's yeah so i just i found my other tool but you can see the difference they're basically the same um all the way through the only difference is this one is not good for doing those different ones so if you have to find one of these things try and find one with a big square on it this thing's pretty much useless i guess you could open that up with a grinder maybe i don't know what do you think i guess you could but why would you if you're gonna buy something buy this one so came out uh, whoa sun came out but um we're gonna finish my braces to the top of the hill right there because that's all of them and just get the brace wires done and then that way we can start rolling out the wire um just get this done i did change my plan as i was working here it might change again we know how i operate around here we're gonna start with our roll at this end and start unrolling it it's pop this wire apart and hopefully it's rolling the right direction um i'll show you sort of what i mean when i get this open here so i'm just gonna pop at it here and i'll see you in a minute thankfully we started on the right side because the wire will roll this way with the bottom <laughs> with the bottom towards the post. Um, if it had to unroll the other way, uh, whatever. If we couldn't roll it this way, but thankfully we're starting at the right corner. So it means we've got to work this way, that way, that way, and then back here is where we'll finish. But um, yeah, so the smaller holes at the bottom, because this will all just flip up. So I'm going to find some rocks. Hi, Benjamin. Come here, Benjamin. This you might be in this field with the boys. He might be the Rams. You're gonna have Rodney in here. Put on your head, water. Rodney, the Rams will be in here, and maybe you can spend your day in here with the guys. Protect them from those coyotes. Hey, eh? he's a good boy. Um, yeah, he might just come out here and spend some time with them because he'll just walk the perimeter a lot and then go tough in. So that might be the way it goes down, but I'm going to get some rocks on this. This clearly needs to go that way another foot, so so it can wrap around that post. Ready? Yep. 
Oh, let me see if that's good. Oh, we could wrap this under this wire right here. That'll hold it. That'll hold it. Get under there. And then I gotta take all this out when I come back, but. So now for the fun part of unrolling this all the way down, hopefully it goes straight down and doesn't like into the fences. So what I think it's gonna do. Let's see how it works. Ooh, this is so much fun. This is what we're using here. Uh, there you go. Popular secondary uses is for sheep. I don't think this would be a good cattle fence. Barbed wire is a good cattle fence. Edge line. Uh-huh. I might have to let you guys go for a minute here. So this fencing here is a heavy duty. Heavy duty, okay. And that means it's got a um, nine and a half and 12 gauge wires on it. Uh, the downside is, is this is, it doesn't have the crimps. So the other fence you get, it's heavy duty, but it's got like a crimp in it right there, all the way down. Um, this fence is more suitable for how we've graded and smoothed this all out everywhere and everything is sort of graded like that. The crimp wire type fence is good for like if you're going up and down and up. So like the top section on this fence, we do have one roll of that stuff that we'll put up there. I see this fence here, we've leveled her out pretty solid that the light terrain differences, this shouldn't be too bad. So. I'm going to finish rolling this out and see where we're at. And then, um, yeah, I don't know where I'll be at next. So I'll let you know. I'm just going to go put the phone away. But yeah, I'll let you know what the heck we get to next and such. Because we're getting close to lunch and checking on the sheep. I made a bit of a mistake. You think I'd know better. It's fixable. And it's not really a mistake. It's just when I pull that, put that wire, which is just ended right by uh, Benjamin there, I gotta put another roll there and run it this way, but that's not the problem. You saw how we were rolling it flat out. I need to be able to bring my tractor over here, right over to this area here. And then I put the um, ratchet come along onto the tractor and I pull the fence this way. And then as we pull the fence, it gradually um, goes from laying on, uh, laying here and then it rises up. I can't pull it past this rail. I gotta take all that down right there, that rail and that, uh, that brace wire so that I can pull the wire through here. But yeah, I gotta take all, all this down here so that I can run my wire through and I gotta go take another roll out to that spot there. So I'm gonna get on that. I think I'm going to go for lunch. I think I'm going to go for lunch instead. Uh, I might not get as much done as I'd hoped today. The Rams might not be out till Friday. Oh well. We're going to get them out at some point. I think I'm going to go truck down this way and dump a roll. Down there, out of the back here. And then I think I'm going to head up for lunch. Where's Ben? Uh, is there a Ben under here? There's no Ben under here. He's somewhere else. He went off that way, so let's go do it. They're looking pretty good out there. They don't look stressed at all. Oh, they're looking cool out there. I think they're eating well. They seem to be shutting down. Right, Shade? We haven't seen these guys here. Right, sorry. Where is, where is Sure? Where is Chevy? She's right there. Chevy's doing good. That's her at the water, right, Chev? <laughs> Chevron? She's looking good. You're shade. You kick ass. There's Happy. There's Scorpion. There's um, oh, Samples and Grafty. You guys are looking good? Mr. Freeze. And the show lambs. So, yeah, there's Chevy. She's doing good. There's your update. Day three. She took a tumble in the creek, but she's rocking on, baby. You can see where the sheep are right through there. That's that's their field you can sort of see them every now and then 
I was right about here and you can sort of see them. I saw them ripping across the field from here. See, you can see them pretty good. I saw them running, like they're like scared out of their mind, just ripping through that field right there um, yesterday. So, I, and I couldn't figure out why the rails were down, but I pulled right up about, so obviously the little shitter, okay, I'm gonna zoom out. I'm right about here, and that dog comes flying over here, runs through all of this, past my trailers. And I'm just like, what the hell? None of the sheep are over here whatsoever. They're all hiding up on that hill right there with them. Way up in those trees up there, way up there, there was a lone ewe standing there looking just scared out of her mind. So I found a little dude right in this tall, right in that tall grass if this will refocus out. So where those guys are, I actually walked right past him to go check that mama out. Cause I saw her over there while everybody's over here. Then I walked from her, I sort of followed her back here to these guys and one of our ewes had a limp, so I just sort of watched all them and looked at them. And then I did a walk back along this fence line, and then I was doing a walk over here to check if there was footprints, like if the dog was in digging gopher holes. So I clearly missed that lamb. So we pushed a sheep in, I went all along up here over to there, and I always checked those far trees. And I saw the white thing from that angle, so I came across, and sure enough, little dude was dead. He'd. Uh, Definitely been a couple hours, four hours or so. So, hi dudes. So that's what happened there. Um, it was a mauling attack. That's our guardian dog. Look at him in with his sheep. Good boy, Ben. I guarantee you he's gonna show up out back and help us with the work we're doing. I told ya. I told ya. See? See? You see? Now, uh, I gotta go see where I left off because I can't remember for the life of me. Okay, so as you can see, I did dump this roll off here. There we go. Good. Get this flattened right out here if we can. We need this as flat as we can. Come on. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna go grab the fencing pliers and then I'll meet you back here. So just wait for me here, okay? You got it? Okay, I'll turn around. Stop coming with me. Okay, seriously, go, go wait. Go. I got this. You guys go wait. Wasn't it easier to stay there than come with me? There. So I got my fencing pliers. I actually got two pairs of fencing pliers. We're gonna pop this roll over here and then overlap it and then clip these ends off. I'll, I'll bring you over and see, uh, show you. So this will be clipped off and this will be used to wrap and we'll overlap this one section right here. And this section of wire will wrap on this side of that roll. And then that rolls other, like half of this will wrap on this side. Make sense? It will when we're done. Okay, so you see how these are clipped off and then we just start wrapping the wire basically around it. Okay, my, this is hard to do. Like this, and then like this, and then we'll just keep wrapping that around. That's where I'll use those black pliers to wrap it around. So what I'm just gonna do though is spooch that all the way out, I think, and then come back and finish tying all this out. Mostly because I really don't wanna do this because it's a lot of work. And I'd rather just be putting the fence up than having to deal with this, but you'll, what am I doing here? I gotta roll this out and then come back and tie this. Ugh, I don't want to do it. You guys do it. Yeah, you guys do it. I'm just gonna go sit down. You guys did a good job. Look at that. Hey, I'll finish these two up. Hey, you even went as far as to finish rolling that out. Well, I'm gonna finish this up then. You just take and you roll this over and then start wrapping that and then roll this over and start wrapping that. And if we got to use the pliers, we got to use the pliers because it is wire and it is a little hard on the hands. This is why I have a piece of flat that's got a notch and then you can just roll it around. Works so much better. 
if I find another bit of flat steel or spring steel, I might make it. Something hardened, I'll make another one. And this one. You guys sure made it easy by doing this all for me. Oh God, look at making that one. Doesn't have to be tight. You see that one sort of spreading out? Don't worry about it. Right. Right, right. This is just a bit of a shorter wire here, so it's not as easy to fold as this side was. Or wrap. I would recommend a set of pliers specifically for this. Um, what I should do is take these pliers here and then drill this out and then notch the teeth here so that it would, um, you could have the wire stick out and then this would roll over the, um, that. That's basically what you're doing. But if you had a, actually I should probably just do that. Now I made a new tool. You guys gave me an idea for a new tool. See, YouTube's paying off. Way to go folks. Um, I'm gonna take this stuff to the truck and I'm gonna take these tools to that end because we gotta lift this up and then wrap the wire around and then tie it to itself. So, all right, friends. We now have to race all the way back. Psst. This fence line's taken a long time. This, I can't believe we're... If I only do this today, I am gonna be not happy. But also, it's kind of a slow start this morning. And we're working with some issues. Uh, actually, not as bad as with working on the trailer. At least all my tools for this, minus that one little rappy dealio that I said I'm missing, they're all working good. So. So, we have to cut these these wires out of here. So these ones here, I gotta cut those out all the way down here. I might even have to take these two out in order to wrap it around here, but avoid this and some of the other barbed wire down there. So what I would have liked to have done on this is put this barbed wire fence up after, because I redid this corner um, when I redid this post here. And essentially this whole fence line, I redid this brace right here. That's why this is at a better height than where it was because this whole thing was just pulling right over so i thought i'd fix it for everybody things right look out for your neighbors clip all that and then start feeding it around the post and ties it up i'm hoping we left enough pulled this way to do that that's a good tool to use i like these pliers they just as they use them the metal peens over the I wish there was a way to pull them apart to take a file to them and clean up the cutting edge. So, whatever. And then we get to unravel all these. Or your... Okay, seriously, I have no... Oh, there's a bit of a bend on that. Look at that. Huh? Like there's a bit of a... You see on the cutting edge there? Hmm. Weird. I don't know why that did that. I don't know where this came from. Maybe Carrie won it in an auction. She wins lots of stuff in auctions. Which is why this farm needs to do good. Because Carrie keeps spending stuff at auctions. I need you to buy lamb. Buy lamb. Subscribe. So, Carrie, why are you buying things at auctions all the time? Well, because we need stuff like this, man. You know the tarp shed? You know in our sheet pen she got all the posts for that and a whole bunch of rafter ties for like 10 bucks so i mean maybe it shouldn't be bail me out because carrie keeps buying stuff but support carrie's habit to buy stuff on auction there you go buy lamb so we can support carrie's habit of buying stuff on auction she's gonna hear me editing this and i'm gonna get the worst look i'll tell you right now hi carrie She's at the farmer's market right now making money so she can buy stuff on auction. <laughs> you laugh, but she is. The auctions on Facebook are a great thing for, like a lot of people don't like Facebook, but try and find those auctions on like Twitter or Instagram or, <sighs> I hate TikTok. Who else hates TikTok? Do you guys hate TikTok? 
I'm not really a fan of it. We tried to use it, not really a fan. You have to actively, I had it on my phone, my black phone, my spare phone there. And the only thing I'd watch it for is, um, there's a guy, he builds a really cool, um, he took a school bus and like a, a, the Ford version of our dump truck and made a really cool low rider truck that he actually uses to work. And then the other thing I watch is um, there was some really cool art coming out of China and Japan and stuff and pottery work. But the problem is, is you scroll, you scroll, you scroll, you get all this cool artwork and then you got to go do something. So you leave your phone and it's on like a kids dancing. And then that's all you ever see on that stupid friggin' app. It's genuinely designed to make you stupid. Cause I was looking for like, there's a guy that does science experiments and it's just easier to go on YouTube and watch that stuff. I really like um, physics stuff and whatnot, but YouTube or uh, uh, TikTok is not designed to push the stuff that betters your mind. Send help immediately. I'm talking to myself. This is this is fencing. Yeah. If you guys weren't here, I'd still be talking to myself. Yeah, this is pretty easy going. This is pretty nice and relaxing type work. That's why I like it. The post pounding and the grading and filling and everything. That's, oh, are you kidding me? That is a little bit of a noisy, hectic, bang, bang, bang. Dangerous because there's been lots of instances where post pounders have killed people. So, um, but this is just, this is nice, man. Except for the wire is really, <clears throat> oh, anyways. I'm gonna finish this. You guys don't need to be here, so. So, I just finished popping that one section off. I need to pop another row out. And then we need to go to the other end and start pulling wire this way because I'm about that much too short. So. All right, you wonderful folks out there. We are off to start pulling wire. It is definitely not as exciting as it sounds. Um, we just gotta start at the reel at that end, pull that wire this way, and then pull a bunch of it in sections all the way down. Hey buddy, pump that into the truck. Anyways, what we gotta do here is just essentially grab and pull, and then walk down 60 feet or so, grab and pull. Walk down 60 feet, grab and pull. Just go with flow. Look good. Grab and pull. Better have too much than not enough. I hope this is quality entertainment. I'm having fun doing it. And we might have actually figured out a way to make this work. I turn it off. And then I turn it on and talk for a little bit and I turn it off. So I'm sort of editing myself without editing myself. There's that joint you guys did for me. Thank you. I think we got it. Another two or three pulls and we're done. Working now? Yeah, good. Did a quick measurement here. Um, I do have to take this extra rail, this extra piece down. If I try to wrap this around, it just won't work. Uh, might work it's just too close to tell i think we can take that down because the one wire that goes vertical right there is actually going to be right against the post all right crew so you see that wrapped around and then loops and then we'll just wrap that around a couple more times this one here just based on where it was sitting we sort of had to go under um and if i could get this down anymore but it's kind of getting into the ground right there so we can't really push this down so this one here will just be the way it is we're not gonna worry about that too much don't worry about it and then we'll just yeah like i said pull these tight and wrap them around but this is why the other vertical right here we could get rid of it because it's right on the post so at least this is here holding this right up tight and then it'll hold these wires all together and then what we'll do is we will remove this staple because if we try and pull this it's going to knock this knot back and wreck all this on both of those We'll walk back and get the tractor and we'll hook up all our stuff and I'll show you the very simple, very easy, any of you can make it tool for tensioning this. I'm gonna finish this and just wrap this and I'll show you the finished product. We've got the tractor here at the end of the line there. 
Um, it's definitely raining again, but I'm gonna try and get this done. Ideally, I'd like to get this wire up and then that wire up, but uh, I don't wanna be out in the rain again. This is taking the most time because of, I had to put these braces up and then I've had to walk back and forth and brace or, and then splice that. So once we get to these short sections and then already have the equipment sitting out here, we should be going a lot faster, but um, I'll show you the fancy tool. This is it. This is literally it. Two two by fours, three holes, three fasteners, bolts and nuts and washers and then um, binder twine and then there's a couple of ratchet straps under there I'll get that set up and show you I mean the binder twine's not ideal I used to have some nylon rope but I've lost it or used it over the years somewhere so I mean I'm cheap right so he says with a $200 impact sitting right there but I'm cheap on certain things if you can cheap out here you can buy the fancy tools cheap out fancy tools Support my habit by lamb. You missed a good rain. So that's day two of being out in the rain. And then yesterday, these, my ear protection there, because they're damaged, they filled full of water. So coming back on the tractor, I got a nice, like, face bath all over. Face bath? Face wash? Face, 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 face wash. Okay. And then my seat is ripped up. You can see there. So my arsk is wet. But I promised I'd show you before we start pulling, so. So, do we double up or triple up or quadruple up the binder twine around the bar and then one down. And then this goes to the top and then that one goes to the bottom. And then we'll, usually I don't like to use the tractor at all and I just ratchet strap. But because we have so much loose over there, um, we're going to just use the tractor and get this bottom edge right up to the post, I think is the best way to go. Um, keep in mind, it's been over 14 months since the last time I did fencing like this. Um, last spring we did 28 feet up in the bottom, top of the sheep pen, um, where Manny's girls go in there, uh, two days ago video, you'll see that, that fence there that they were going, that was the last one I did. Last year we did all these posts, all this fill, all this grading and whatnot, so... Oh, and the other thing, I hope you guys remind me to remind, to tell you, I'll just say now, you'll notice that the sheep fence is on this side of the fence, and that's because the sheep are here, and if they push on that, then it's not going to push the staples down. Um, if there's cows, there'd be barbed wire on that side. Um, that fence way over, way over there, if you rewind the video a bit, you'll see that the barbed wire is on the neighbor's side instead of this side. Well, again, that's why it used to be on our side, but we put it onto the other side because that's where the cows are mostly going to be. You might be concerned about the horses. Um, that's why we're putting electric along the top so they don't reach over and bend the top. Blue sky. It's a weird day. It's like spring in July, June, spring in June. But we'll go ahead and start pulling this back. I got to get my hearing protection back on wherever I put it right there. Okay, so we'll pull this back a little bit and then we'll take up the rest of the tension here. Screw it, let's do it. done on that it's starting to make a bit of noise so let's just do a walk up and down though looks like that bottom piece is not tight enough look at how that's pulled into there hmm. oh it is tight it's not even pulling in right now so we're gonna have to go down and give it some assistance i think and possibly put some temporary um nails up to lift it or uh, not nails staples in to lift it up because this is not exactly uh yeah see where's our splice it should be up here somewhere right there so see how that pulled out really nice like that that's why we do it the way we do it and, um you see how it twists like this 
so the bottom isn't tensioned as much because the top is actually going from up here to down here so that's probably where a lot of our issues are coming from the only way to solve that is to start putting this up and then stapling it i believe would be the best way i've done this enough i should know but like i said this is the first fence in 18 16 months so uh, be prepared for some growing pains here so. it's a lot of setting resetting do 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 stuff so don't worry about it we'll get it <laughs> So that's how we knotted that all the way down. There's a few areas where there's a bit of issue just because of how it had to go around that. But other than that, it looks fairly even. So I think our biggest problem is, I think we're gonna go along and we'll staple every four or six posts to bring this whole thing up. And then I'm gonna reset the tractor. Cause it also looks like up at the far end there that the the tractor's too far, um, sorry. Tractor's too far over this way, so it's tensioning it away from the fence post. So we'll go deal with that. This is usually a lot easier on shorter sections or if you don't go so long. So I had to push the tractor that way a little bit, undo all this and reset it so that we're pulling more around the post that way or more in line to the post. And now that we've reset it, I can actually tension the bottom up a lot nicer, I think. So I was just, just, so we just moved it over so it, this is just a little bit more in line there. And then we just keep an eye on that, keep an eye on that. Be very careful because we've got a lot of force pulling this up. Ooh, that's getting tight. That bottom needs to be tightened still. But I did staple that up to just sort of get some of the weight more in line. So it was pulling even. And I think that's kind of what um, helped take up that bottom a little bit more. The problem with pulling with the tractor is you don't know if the top and the bottom are pulling evenly here. Um, the way if you do it like we're doing now, you can pull it a bit more evenly and work the sections that need to be worked at the time. So. Just be careful when you're doing this because this is a lot of force. Catchy shit. That piece ain't catching. There we go. Still a bit wavy. Like the bottom is still a little bit. The top's tight. Gotta be careful, you can break the wire. You know, these binder twines aren't the most ideal. This is 7,000 pounds and I might be moving that too. So that top is starting to work its way backwards. You can see we might want to go tighten that up. The problem's going to be is trying to tighten this corner here. See how we're pulling up? I can't get that wire down to the bottom. Usually my fence lines come out nice and even from there, but because this ramps up right here, we'll take a walk down there and see how she looks. That's that's a lot of gap there. I gotta figure out how I'm taking that out. So, yeah, you look at this top is loose here. Bottom's loose here. So, there's still a lot of tension to come out of this. Okay, I gotta go down and see if my staples are binding up yet. Because you see how this one here is, um, this one here, there's still lots of slide room, but some of the other ones might be up against here. So, because. There's a lot more force that can pull this way, but we're really fighting the weight of the fence, especially on that bottom. Well, on the top is taking all the weight. The bottom hasn't really pulled yet, but it's because it's going up the hills there. You can see how it's rolled under. So, so I've repositioned this like twice and moved the tensioner forward and i um, cranking on that. Now I can get this whole section here tightened up. Current Greg has to trust past Greg. The problem with that is, is I don't, know why i did stuff so um if i do something really like big brain smart and i don't leave a note for myself i'll probably forget it until like i said oh, we've got all this together and i know something now i know something that past greg did past greg knew that doing this in one solid section of 460 some odd feet would be too heavy to use just that one tensioner at that end. Ooh, it's getting bright there. Stay over there. So, 
past Greg, put a brace in the middle of the fence so that he could take half that weight, intention it to one point, while simultaneously, and then once that is done, the rest of the, pre the weight on the other half would be tensioned by the other side, which leads us right to here. That's why this is here. I put this here so that I could run a board right, right in here, and then I could tension to this, because this section here is not pulling tight on the top and the bottom. So if we had this being tensioned to this point here, all that slack would sit on this side. We could easily pull it out with the tractor and the come alongs over there. And now I just don't want to continue because it's like 6.30 and I'm tired. I have to go take some stuff apart on the main fence along the road to get the rest of the tensioners for this. But mm -hmm, this is just all loose. I can't pull tension past that brace. But this is all, like this isn't bad. This is all sort of flimsy up here. And it doesn't matter how much pulling I do. And then the bottom is a little bit loose through there. It gets worse the closer you go that way. Um, sorry about the brightness, it's decided to come out. But that is what's going on. So I don't want to block um, Billy Boy's uh, driveway access there. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is just wrap the wire around the fence and staple it out temporarily to hold it up and then take all my stuff and just park it around here. I knew this had a purpose. It just, it was so long ago that I did it that I just can't remember. Couldn't remember. Can't remember? Couldn't? Couldn't and remember? So anyways, yeah, we're pulling too much weight or we can't overcome the weight of the actual fence itself to make that nice tension on it. Because, you know, if I was a lesser person, I'd just staple it up and say, it's good enough. But if you put in a proper fence, it'll last. Um, I'm going to get the tractor moving here. Get the, tra blah, 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 blah. get the tractor out of here. Oh, just keep that, just keep that um, boards and stuff and just pull it around the side there and hope that the weight of it keeps it up a little bit. And then uh, take the tractor out of there. Put the tractor right here. So I'm just going to take this all apart. I won't bore you with that. There's not much else going on here besides taking this stuff apart. Not as far along as I would have liked. But this was the one section that I uh, I was kind of like... It's the longest one. Then there's another one over on the hillside up and down. The 90 degrees to this. Uh, the other perimeter one. That one's going to be a bit of a trouble. But these other short sections all the way up here. That's going to be fairly easy. So... They're short, they're like a quarter of the weight that we're pulling, so. That chippy is mad. Huh. I didn't do, oh, Ben's right there sleeping. There's a chippy in there somewhere, but well, Ben's just asleep. That thing is just mad at him. Anyways, I'm So, I think we're done here. Um, uh, so we didn't get anything really done. I mean, we got the braces up and then I had to take a brace down. And then we thought we'd get the wire up and we were close. But my forgetting just one small step that would have taken two minutes has kind of ruined that for the day. But that's farming with a head injury. Yeah, I think I'm going to be done here. Yeah, we didn't get much done. I mean, we got some, lot, some stuff done, but we didn't get a lot done. We're set up for the next day to really crank it out and we'll have a little bit better idea. Uh of what we're doing. Um, I really wanted to have something like start to finish. Um, hey, hey, you learn something, you're entertained at least. Um, until tomorrow, I suppose. It's farming. Take how long you think something's gonna do, take, multiply it by four, and then keep adding four until um, it's finished. So, yeah, we'll get this done, don't worry about it. The boys will be out on grass. Don't you worry about those fat little buggers. Time. Thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah. Stay tuned to watch us finish this fence and get all these guys set up in here. Before you go, before you go, before you go. There's Larry. There's Willow. Say bye, Larry. No. You wild horse. Oh, there's Mama. Oh, sorry. Deepsy's in there somewhere. She just disappeared. Dang it, she's moving fast.
spy horses. You guys see them? Where's Disco? Wild range horses. <laughs> 